language and how like humans communicate like through nonverbal communication and how that's such a big part of persuasion and speech giving and like conversation in daily life, but people don't actually realize it. So, um, and as Brendan had mentioned earlier, um, if you have any questions or comments about anything like throughout me talking, feel free to just like shout out. And talk. Like we can just be a conversation. It doesn't have to be like a like official question. Okay, so. Um, first I'm just going to start with like a basic like summary of body language and like and examples of like daily life of what, like, what you would see. And also once you know about them, you'll start noticing them in conversation and be like, oh my god, I didn't realize that before. Okay, so um, a definition of body language is a form of mental and physical ability of human non-verbal communication consisting of body posture, gestures, facial expressions, and eye movements. 60 to 70 percent of communication is solely through nonverbal communication, meaning about only like a quarter to like 40 percent of communication is actually like speaking. So you think like, oh, you can just say words, and that's what people believe, but it's mainly like how you're communicating, and a lot of that is subconscious, and you don't actually know you're interpreting someone else's body language. It's just a very innate, innate thing. Um, and like some examples of this is that um, mirroring. I don't know if any of you have like heard of this, but like, okay, see, so okay, so you guys have. <laughs> um, like this happens on like a friendship level, but like it's it's mainly like looked at like during dating, like when you're kind of like liking someone. Is that let's say like you have a glass, like you're like eating dinner, and you take a drink, and you take a drink of water or something. And at the same time, the, next, the, the person across from you would take a drink at the same time and put it down at the same time. And this is like mainly like a subconscious thing, is like you're mimicking their actions to like show similarity that like, yeah, we're the same, we should get along, like that idea. But it's not only like, like in a romantic sense, it's like, let's see. No, no one's demonstrating it now. But like, if you were like, <laughs> just, yeah, you never know. Um, but yeah, okay. actually. <laughs> Like if, if you're sitting with your friend and they suddenly like lean down and cross their legs and you're next to them and you're like, oh my god, yeah, like and you do the same thing, it is a thought. So um you'll notice it for now, like when you're like having a conversation. Um so there's that. And um then there's just the general like gestures, like like body posture and gestures. Um, for example, like crossing your arms, it's very like it's an unconscious way of like saying, I'm putting up a barrier against me and you, and like, I don't want to be with you, so I'm just gonna cross my arms, and, like, you can be like, oh yeah, that's great, but then like, <laughs> I hate you, kind of thing. <laughs> so um, there's that, but also there's a, the idea that this in America can mean like, I'm just cold, or like, it's cold in this room, or like in another culture, it could just be like, that was such an insult, but like, I hate you. So it's all very culturally dependent on what the society thinks is acceptable. This goes along with like proximity of talking to someone in conversation, where like, I don't know, like about how far away would you say that you stand when you're just talking to someone like, you know like pretty well, but not like fully? 18 minutes. Okay. I'd say like two feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't that. Really <laughs> to accept and understand that 
social phenomenon. <laughs> would you say that when you meet people like that and they come uncomfortably close to you, you're more willing to accept it and not feel awkward? Like that you know that it's... Like strangers come up and kiss you on the face, would you be like, okay, that's cool. I know exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, you'll be more willing to accept it once you know that's what they find acceptable. You know, like I don't think if, if you're like, wait, you're from America, I, that's not, just because you say it's acceptable, I'm not gonna accept it. It's, it's just very like, it's bad culture. But, um, yeah. So another thing, this one I found really interesting, and I still haven't been able to like really notice it, but apparently it's a thing, is the way you look at someone in eye contact, um, and it's also a thing to think about during like, interviews. Um, when you, when you, there's, I wish I had a diagram of it, but if you think about a face, and you think there are two triangles of the face, there's the upper part of your, like, your face, and then like the lower triangle, and for like professional business settings, like with interview, like you really want to just present, like be confident, like authoritarian, eye contact seems to be made in the upper triangle, so the eyes and like, like in between, like the forehead area. So you're looking like up, up kind of thing. Whereas when it's more of like, I thought this was with people you don't know. Whereas if you wanna, like if you want to build a friendship and you wanna be more of just like, okay, we're just like hanging out, like kind of getting to know each other, being friends, it's the lower triangle where it's more of the eyes and like the nose. And try to think about it, like if you're talking to your friend and you suddenly are talking and then you start looking up, it's this whole different dynamic of like, oh, things just got really like, cold and like intense. So um and then there's the idea of like if you look like at the lips and there's like a romantic interest, all that. But um so eye contact is like incredibly important. Um and people don't realize it that like if you're like talking to someone and then you're just like, oh yeah, and you start like averting your gaze, it's like, okay, you look bored. You're, you know, it's very obvious. Yeah, and certain things are like common sense, but others are like I'm extremely self conscious now and I have no idea what my eyes are. Right. <laughs> Until you know what they normally do. 
know if I go like like that, something's up. You know, so. <laughs> um, so I just want to show you. The video's gonna go. Up. This is somewhat with body language, kind of more scientific. I just think it's a really cool thing to think about. Um, it's called the McGurk effect. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Has anyone heard of it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a There is one illusion that reveals this isn't oh, all yeah, the case. Uh, uh, uh. Have a look at this. What do you hear? stimuli thousands and thousands of times, but the effect still works on me. I can't help it. The 
Speech brain just takes in that information and doesn't care about what outside knowledge you bring to bear. All right, so, um, yeah, so that actually, I just wanted to throw that in there because I think it's really cool and it kind of like goes along with the idea that um, seeing a person is much different than just hearing a person. Um, any, any comments or questions about that? slightly different circuit of speech than in blind people. Sorry, say that again? Do blind people then have a slightly different circuit of speech? Is there some kind of different stimuli? Um, there have actually been um, different studies of like how the different modalities of like the senses affect each other. Um, and they haven't, I, I, off the top of my head, I don't know any about um, being blind, but deaf people apparently have, if, if you're born deaf, you then are able to um, develop your brain in a way that has stronger, like the areas of then sight or smell are stronger because you don't you don't have any sense of hearing. Um, and also, it hasn't been done. I guess I don't know any other humans, but I know like in cats, they've been um, blinded and um, they have better sense of like touch or like other senses. So in that sense, it's like a different cir circuitry, I guess. Um, in the sense that they just develop their brain differently because they need to. Um, I think uh, kind of what that is, I, I remember learning a term in AP psychology, plasticity, yeah. where you, part of your brain that's not being used is being taken over by something else. And that whole idea also goes along like physically, um, like with like if you physically have like an amputated arm, like that part of your brain isn't needed in, anymore. So like other um, areas are then. Like, Though. Yeah. I remember hearing a case, and they weren't able to prove this for certain. There was a woman who was born without arms, mm -hmm. and she claimed that she was still making gestures yeah. with her arms. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, I have yeah. that. Um, so I have um, fake fingers, and three of my fingers are metal, um, but you still have the urge to bend them. And I can, like, look not looking at them, swear to God I'm bending them, and, but they don't bend, they're not real. So. Yeah. It's called like the amputee effect. Yeah, it's like the um, phantom limb, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's the idea that like your brain thinks one thing, but, like even if it's physically not there. Um, and I guess the point that Abdul also made is that we have the innate need to make gestures. That's another part of like conversation. Um, like if you try your hardest to have a conversation without moving your hands, it's very difficult. Yeah, and I, like, uh -huh. I just did it. Like, you can't, like, um, there's, like, the idea that gestures themselves give meaning to what you're actually saying. Which is why, if you're on the on a phone, like a telephone, um, and the DC, like, it's, like, on the telephone, like, um, that you'll still do gestures. You'll, you'll be nodding. It's like, oh, you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, I mean, that just shows you the power of, Um, I wanted to show you like effects of, in history, um, so I'm going to just try to say it, it's actually really cool. Um, the, I, just this one thing, um, the debate with John F. Kennedy versus Nixon in 1960 was the first televised debate. Um, does anyone like, off the top of their head, know anything about that? No? Cool. Okay. So, so whether it's black Kennedy's and white. Oh yeah, so it was, it was the first televised debate, and before that it had always been like on radios or like, you know, newspaper or like, um, and this was the time of age where like, televisions were more, more common in homes, um, and after the debate, there were like, reports like, asking people who had seen it or heard it on the radio still, who they thought won. The people, the majority of people who listened to it on the radio thought that Nixon had been the majority of people who had seen it on television thought that Kennedy had won the debate. They said the same thing, they heard the same thing, but the interpretation was completely different. And um, people have analyzed that debate and analyzed that all, and they've come to the idea that, well, Kennedy is arguably better looking, 
He had a better color suit for the black and white TV screen. It like popped more. Um, Nixon had a gray suit because he had black, so like just the graphics. Um, Nixon like sweated a lot, and he was very he was like he was like hunched over. Whereas Kennedy was in good shape, younger, and just like knew what he was doing. So that kind of changed the way that presidential debates have have continued all these years because. Think of like the image of the president as opposed to like what they actually say. Um, so yeah, I, I have pictures of it, but um, and that oh one more thing. This um <laughs> sorry, I should be like it. Um this the whole idea of like communication over the phone or versus in person or now text over um, person yeah. is definitely problematic. Um, or just something to consider, because I actually did my research paper on this, is that the idea that you don't understand people as well, you're not actually face to face, whereas like there's like online courses for school that are um, more popular, or like in classroom teaching, uh, and just like friendships, like are they, like can they even be actual relationships if you don't like see them in person? So I think that's something for our generation to actually like consider that there's just something that we don't really understand, but as humans, we need to like be there with someone to like really understand what they're saying. So yeah, that that wraps it up. Um, thank you. <laughs> but I should say that wraps up like the official part. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments or yeah, Brianna? I don't think online courses are so bad because obviously professors can. Torso and mm -hmm. arms sometimes, but like, does it still does it still take away that much from our body language? If you could still see like arms and torso and that sort of thing, right? Um, so there have been studies that have been done, um, which was like they compared being in person to having a conversation versus being um, like in separate rooms but talking like, online, or I guess like inherently. And they they've shown that has been um, they've shown that has been you, you don't understand them as well you don't like you just like it takes longer to make communication um, but they haven't exactly come to a conclusion on seeing the person but still through technology um, so that's actually still like trying to be figured out in my opinion I still don't think it's the same. I think it's better, but I, I, there's something about being able to react right there and to know like the whole picture. I think it's just a delayed reaction. Yeah. And, and not even so much delayed, like, I don't know. Like, if you think texting, there's a time, you could be saying something you would say, and they would say, if you're not thinking about inflection or anything, but there's just a time. I send you a text, I put the phone down, I walk over, I do this. Yeah. And that's not how conversations like really work. So it could be like you're on Skype, okay, you're probably have another tab open and then they say something, you wait like five seconds, it comes it's not it's not the same as actually like being with the person and knowing like, oh, this is what they're doing. And also the other thing, like, yes, you still see the person on Skype, but you don't see their surroundings. So let's say like someone comes in the room like behind the computer and you're like, and you see their eyes divert, but you're like, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. there's still that like miscommunication of not really knowing what they're doing. So yeah. Also like you were talking about the texting thing. If you think about like girls texting boys, like that's the that's perspective that I know that I think like boys do this too. Girls will get together and like sit and think of like a witty response for the boy, right? <laughs> Everybody be naughty there is, but I know you all do it. I've been with you. Um, <laughs> and so the girl that's like maybe not as witty as she's like being over this text message because she's had like 10 or 15 minutes to think about something really cute to put. So yeah. Yeah, that was that a basis for a relationship. Yeah.
Or it's the opposite, that like, you could really think like hard about what you're saying, but then the other person like interprets it completely differently. Mm -hmm. And then, but you don't, think about, next time you get a text, think about your facial reaction. And like, you automatically do it. Like, if you're like, what? Like, why'd they say that? But the person doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. So like, they can't be like, no, 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 this is what I meant. Like, there's like a good like, few minutes if you're having a quick conversation where like, you're angry at them because you misinterpreted them. Whereas like, if you're a person, you very quickly mediate that situation. Mm -hmm. Anything else do you want me to analyze your body? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, bro, what's um, I know you've heard about it, but the thing where it's like, you can do the opposite, so you see, like you're happy and you smile and you're bored and you go like this, but um, there's also the opposite. If you do the gesture, you can make yourself feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So there's like I know this study with like college students who are listening to like a radio talk show, and like some of them had to listen and nod the whole time, or shake their head no, or like do nothing. And people who nod the whole time had a like positive reaction. People who shook their head mm -hmm. had a negative. And then the like control group is just like whatever. So it's like uh, I know there's a TED talk about it. Like you're going into an interview, and instead of being like you like go into the bathroom and then you just go like this. I'm a winner. Like it's it's a thing that um, it's innate in everybody and no one ever has to teach you. But when you feel good about yourself, like after you win a race, people always extend their body. So it's like if you need to feel good about yourself, like um, I know it's like really hard to be mad while you yes. while you smile. Like okay, sometimes you don't want to do it, but if you do it enough, if you force yourself mm -hmm. to smile. And like stand up straight, you'll begin to feel it. There's um yeah, that's incredibly true. Um there's like actual like the dopamine and serotonin of like being happy that's like naturally produced when um you're happy like naturally. Mm -hmm. Um that same exact chemical makeup is released when you like you could be have cried all day, you know, over the most terrible thing, but if you force like it's hard, but if you force yourself to smile, those chemicals will be released as they would normally. So, yeah, so if you're ever having a bad day, just force yourself to smile. And it's so happy. hard. Uh, I know it's hard, but like, um, that's, um, that's what they actually try to look at at like depressed people, like people with depression, where they realize like there's a different chemical makeup, but if they like, if they force themselves to do certain things, it'll, <laughs> I've never mad. Well, see, that, and that's the other thing, like, the whole baseline. Like, like, you know you know your friends, like, their natural reactions will be something, and then you know if that veers off, that's when you say, like, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Instead of another person, like, what reaction could be. Like, my baseline is arms crossed, feet crossed. Right. Like, I may be extremely interested in what you're saying, but this is just comfortable. Yeah, exactly. When you're not interested, you're like, Really quick tidbit, if you're all here. Also, Jerry, for president, here, who's, who has a good handshake? Grant. And wants to be here. Sure. Okay. He wants to um, volunteer for everything. <laughs> Wait, let me see. Let me try this for your side. Okay. So, for presidents, um, this is like their whole strategic way of like having power in like they're doing an interview or something. Um, so you're walking in the room and you give a handshake. Right now, like I'm the one who's like you can like you're the audience, <laughs> you can see me. So I'm the one who's in power right now. George W. Bush was an expert at doing you may not believe in his politics, but he was an expert and was so good at doing this. He would always make sure to enter from this side so he'd be the one. Whereas if you switch it, you come in and you're like, okay. And what you could do is if you, and you know how like um, certain people like will then like touch the elbow or something? 
when you're doing that, you're the one who's then like in power. Uh, so like, but I know that. Um, tell so her what you do too. Oh. Oh, I'm always coming from the top. Yeah. And you do the finger thing. Yeah. Oh my God, I can oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Can I do that? Pulse. That's yeah, I can show your wrist when I do that. Handshakes are like insane. Like <laughs> at like having power. Um, there's the idea that like if you come in from the bottom, you're very submissive, like open. It's like you know how like like welcoming, like you have open palms. If you come in uh, neutral, you're neutral. If you come from the top, you're like. Or married and kind of <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's good, like it depends what situation you're in. Is that do you wanna be a friend and welcome them in somewhere? Or do you wanna be like, I'm here, listen to me? Um, it all depends, like what you're trying to get at. Certain situations require certain things. Um, so yeah, handshakes total lot. I need a strong handshake. I think I can become a lot. Yeah, wonderful. But if you wanna counter that counter, so like you like <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like using your feet or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, what if someone else also tries to come in from the top? Do you guys like. Yeah, great. Then actually, you, know, you, know, you just kind of like bump down. Does that to you? Because someone else like come from the top too? Well, you like, you go from the top down. Well, if you both come from the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you just go down, you make like a downward handshake. Yeah. <laughs> you can't really handshake uh, yourself. Either. But that's yeah, where the whole like, like, like oh. patting them on the back. Or yeah. other gestures mean like I'm the one in control of you right now. Like when you're walking through a door, I'm not. Or you push them to the side. Like yeah. you push them back. I've yeah. seen presidents do that. Yeah. Um, uh, flash, flash it's a very like strategic. Yeah. 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 That's me very like bonkers. Maybe like it's too overbearing. That's me like. I feel like you're too cheesy, business band like that. Oh well, the whole like like two like hands. Yeah. Um, that's another way, though. Um, but I think it's like motherly. It depends how you do it. Mm -hmm. Didn't Bush do that? Like yeah. The, the expert. Well, that's the other thing. Like when you have it, but you're in that like in fear position, and then you put the other hand, you automatically become dominant. Yeah, because I knew that there was like a like a G20 summit something like that, and Russia, I don't want to say. And like they had the camera up set up so that the president host or whatever was on the mm -hmm. left side so that his right hand would always be on the outside and Bush walked up and like did the second hand class. It's and like just totally yeah. ruined the body language. I was. remember even as like because Bush always did that, they like prevent like counteracted that and like we're gonna set this up so you're not in that position. So they did the whole camera setup and then like, oh psh, I can do one better. <laughs> <laughs> how does it apply to like giving a speech? Like how do you give a speech? Okay. Um, actually. Okay. Well, usually I'll be standing up. Um, so when you're giving a speech, I guess it depends like where you are. But what I've realized is that when, like, let's say this is the edge of the stage. Um, when you take a step forward, it's more of a feeling of like warmth and like welcoming. Um, so like if you're if you really have a strong point or like this is your main argument, you want to stand front and center on the front of the stage. And think about like if a character in a play is giving a monologue, like they're not going to be in the corner. Like if they're not give, like they want to really strong, they're not going to be in the corner. Like, yeah, that's what's up. like they're going to you know be front and center, like looking straight at the audience. So whereas like if you step back, even just one step back, like you distance yourself. So that's my idea. And it's just, it's all about body language, posture, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact. So like if I'm here like this, put your weight on like one leg. Oh, also weight, like when you're standing, the more weight you have on equal, like imbal imbalanced, means like the less interested you are. So you're just like, like that's different than standing up. Yeah. Um, eye contact, the usual eye contact, gestures. I'm telling you, it's just like the same thing like that goes on in daily life, just on a grander scale. Analyze people's body language. No. Yeah, I'd be Christian. No, because right <laughs> now I'm I'm closed off and Wait. bored, but I'm not. But actually, okay, well this is. But like, I, so do you, do you know what they tell you? I don't even know your name, yeah. which, which is kind of creepy, but like, you know, get a You can get someone's baseline like 
looking at me like the whole time. And, like when you're looking at someone, like with that like bright eyed, like focus, uh -huh. like with a smile, you know they're like paying attention. I mean, no one actually wasn't paying attention. Okay. I'll take the right. Call anyone out. Um, whereas like you can be like this, but then like look to the side, and that'll be completely different. in Spanish randomly and she was trying to teach us like how cultural norms change and like how eye contact in America is something like you shouldn't sustain it for more than like three seconds with a superior so she decided to test that by like making eye contact with students and like I enjoy eye contact right so she like turns to me like after she's just like made two people look like complete jerks and then she turns to me and she like looks at me and I look back at her and I'm like, okay. And then like an awkward five seconds pass and I'm still looking at her. And she's like, oh, you're an exception. I'm like, okay, whatever. But well, you just... also know that that's your baseline. So where is it if you only held it for three seconds? Why is that so awkward? Because you're so weird. Because then you get, then it's the idea that like, oh my God, everyone's looking at me. Oh, it's also wrong. awkward because you don't know which eye to look at. You, I think that you look at the eye that is like not, it's like has it's like misshaped or like miss like on a line on your face. So you always look at that eye because you look at the like brow, you look for the, um, yeah, the differences or like the defects. I, I do not know that. It's like always the first eye you look at. I mean, it's like a really small difference. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do that again, the first I'm like, like looking at all of the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look for differences like, and there's only two eyes, doesn't that mean you look at either one? Brain's been really the side that's more dominant, kind of uh, really controls okay. that opposite side of your body. But I also think like it doesn't mean that that if you're right-handed, you're less. Yeah, you know, I just. <coughs> Sure. Uh, 